Hello, this is the Mellow Librarian, mellower than ever, because I took some codrills to deal with my cold. That makes me pretty mellow. So, what does a mellow librarian do when he's mellow? He reviews things like this. Wake in Fright, the novel by Kenneth Cook, which was adapted into a movie, Wake in Fright, in the 1970s. Bo both of these are actually really good. I have to shake them around here because I'm, I'm not used to the depth perception of the camera, but it's they're both really good. Like, this is one of the best adaptations of a book that I've ever seen. And this is one of the most original stories about Australia that I've ever read. And the two of them together, it's just, it, it's like two sides to the story. Like, the movie brings out aspects of the story that you might not have noticed in the book, but, like, the, some of the books are a bit hard to figure out. Like, it's not that I'm stupid, it's just that they, there's some surreal imagery in there that's brought out in the movie a lot more vividly. Yeah, but the thing about Wake and Fright is that the movie was directed by the same guy who brought you, wait for it, Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can't stop laughing about this. The same guy who made it brought what you, Wake and Fright, brought you Weekend at Bernie's. I can prove it to you. See... Uh, there's Ted Kotcheff uh, there. That's Ted Kotcheff's name. The director of both movies is Ted Kotcheff, who directed both Wake and Fright and Weekend at Bernie's. And it's amazing because how can the guy who brought you Weekend at Bernie's direct one of the greatest Australian films of all time. I'll tell you how. In the, in the director's commentary, in like this interview that's on the disc of the Blu-ray, there's like this, there's an interview where he says that because he's Canadian and he's an outsider to Australia, he actually gets a better look into what Australia was actually like back then. And he doesn't really judge Australia, he just shows it shows it like what how he sees it and as a canadian his parents are bulgarian and, and ted kochev was saying and that essentially he feels like an outsider in canada and when he was filming in australia he felt like an outsider but he got the cast and crew to like let him in let, let him know what was going on in terms of how it really worked in that kind of culture and Wake and Fright is one of those movies that it's really uncompromising in how it shows that Australia has a really big drinking culture pro problem. Yeah, like back in the 70s, there was a. If you think the drinking culture in Australia is bad now, you should see it what it was like in the 70s when it was like Broken Hill. It was like really. Basically, there was nothing else to do but drink in the country towns and basically get into fights. And this, this film portrays the absolute brutality. It's more brutal than Niall's latest metal album. That's how brutal it is. It's, you can't get much more brutal than that. I mean, I thought Niall was brutal, but this was brutaler, if that's even a word. Anyway. I can fright. This, I I like how uh, the book it's, uh, the book version reads like a James Bond novel. Like it, this is the most obscure reference ever that, that probably nobody will get. But there's a part in the novel "You Only Live Twice" by Ian Fleming, which is a James Bond book. The one that where he goes to Japan, and before he goes to Japan, James Bond goes to Australia. And he goes to meet this Australian secret agent. And the scenes where he talks to the 
that secret agent in Australia is like it's almost exactly like this, and it's really it's I'm not sure if it's exactly the same. My memory's quite hazy, but it's it's basically I I think that both Ian Fleming and Kenneth Cook do a bang up job in portraying just how sexist and racist that Australians were at the time and that we're pretty uncomfortable about seeing that about ourselves at the moment since we're pretty ashamed of our government at the moment Buddy Conroy putting a filter on us trying to protect yeah. the children when really we I mean where were they when we were growing up with the internet in the 90s we were pretty horrified by the internet and we turned out fine but anyway, political rant aside, this is a good book. And this, this is a good movie. Anyway, I, I would give both a 10 out of 10 on my review scale. It's, it's, really, it's a really interesting story that's quite unlike what you normally see in the cinemas these days. This was actually re-released after a long time when they couldn't find the film print for this movie and they found a good enough print in somewhere in America and now that they've found it again they've re-released it to Cannes and the, apparently the French love this movie I don't know but the French seem to like Australians a lot I don't understand why but there is some point where I want to take advantage of this who knows it's like the it's like the Weird Al Yankovic song Genius in France, like unappreciated in its own country, but like really loved by the French. It's one of those situations of Wake and Fright because Australians didn't really like Wake and Fright when it first came out, and it was lost for a long time, and then they found it again, and now it's out on Blu-ray and DVD or whatever. And they've re-released the book for a new audience. And I think the world is ready to accept Wake and Fright for what it is at this point. And both, both are really, really good things to read and to watch. And the Blu-ray is region free, as you can see. Uh, there it's got all three regions so you can actually import the DVD, the DVD or the Blu-ray from overseas and watch it so you don't have to really you don't have to wait until the US releases it or something but I don't know Wake and Fright good book good movie I'll see you next time